gentlemen, Marcus Bell Grave. Marcus, how you doing, man? It's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here like this. <laughs> well, well, look, you know... Uh, Get more closer to it? Yeah, just a little... It, it, it has definitely been uh, uh, one of my uh, fantasies to, uh, to have a, a real master, you know, in the studio live uh, playing his horn. We did this once before about... Hmm, it's been almost maybe 10 or maybe a little longer. This is 95. Man. 95 is longer. It's been so, so long. Yeah, it's been a long time. And um, why don't you just uh, hit, another, hit, hit another one of those uh, melodies for us. Marcus Belgrave, live on the radio, live at WGPR Radio. And uh, Marcus, tell us about that uh, horn that you have there. This is, uh, this is what is called a pocket trumpet. Uh, a pocket trumpet. pocket trumpet. And a very good friend gave this to me. And uh, I don't, I think he gave it to me because I'm so sure that he wanted me to feel comfortable with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to get the mic closer? Get just a little closer there. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it's a pocket trumpet. Yeah. So you can just uh, wherever you want to blow, you could just oh, you could just walk downtown Detroit and oh, blow everybody away if you wanted to. I, I, I use it mainly uh, when I'm, I'm uh, when I'm, I don't have time to practice at home. I practice in the car wherever I'm going. So I, you know I can hold it with one hand, and drive the other. Only time I take it off is this when I see some dangerous something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know. well, Marcus, tell me. Mm -hmm. um, since you've been playing uh, your horn, uh, tell me uh, what has been the most exciting moment that you've experienced since you've been playing that horn, that trumpet? Well, there's a few. There are a few. Uh, of course, uh, uh, well, I don't know where I should start. But I guess the most exciting was the time I sat in with Dizzy Gillespie. You sat in with Dizzy. The very first time, I think I was about 15 or 16. 15 years old. Yeah. And uh, I knew, uh, by that time, I had knew half of his repertoire, you know, or, or a big portion of his repertoire from recordings, you know, because he was my great first influence. My cousin and I used to have the Vic Troller, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, and uh, I was about four years old when I first heard Dizzy. So, uh, and that's, and I started playing the trumpet when I was six. So, uh, that was, he was my first influence. So when I got the opportunity to play with the, you know, I, some, some friends of mine took me to this, uh, where he was playing. And Clifford Brown had did the same thing about five years earlier. And so it was, you know, relation, uh, elation for me to, to walk up on the bandstand. And I was scared to death. And play with Dizzy. <laughs> And once he found out I could play uh, some of his solos, he left the bandstand and went out and messed with the girls. <laughs> Unless you won. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> well, oh, look here, man. That was, that was just awesome. We have people waiting right here. They're, they want to see you at Chain Park. Hello there. How are you doing? Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Um, let's see. Let's, you should be able to hear me uh, on the radio. Yeah. Okay, how's that? Uh, that's better. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, well, look here, man. Uh, what's, what's it like sitting out there uh, hearing someone like Marcus Spellgrave uh, blow live on the radio? You know, I heard him... He came to, I used to work at a nursing home called Faircrest on so Harper near Dickerson. And he came there and put it on a show for those those people there. And I never forgot. At the nursing home? At the nursing home. Did they, did they dance? They danced. <laughs> and I never forget that. And ever since then, I've been a fan. Well, check that out. And it's nice to hear him play live. Who is, what is your name? Hey, uh, what, what's your name? My name is Rodney. Oh, uh, Rodney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look here. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to talk to you. You uh, you have four tickets, so you can take a few people All right. to see uh, Marcus Belgrave uh, this coming Thursday, uh, August seventeenth at Chain Park. All right, that sounds good. And uh, hang on the line one second, okay? All right. One hundred seven. How you doing? How's it going? Hey, what's going on? Everything's all right. Wonderful. And your name? Calvin Williams. Calvin, look here. You'll be there. You'll be there uh, Thursday to see Marcus Belgrave. Uh, I tell you, what, Marcus, we're gonna we're gonna take all of these callers right here, get these winners. So maybe you could just uh, blow a little set for us uh, while we're on the phone okay. with your fans. Anything you want to play? Um, hello there. Uh, hang on one second, okay? I'm all right. 107, how you doing? Hello there. 107, how you doing? Hello. 107. Hello? Hello there. Hi, Mojo. Hey, what's going on? I love you, Mojo. Hey, we're loving you, too. Woo! Hey, Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> well, look here. We're going to let you scream down at uh, Shane Park this coming uh, Thursday, August 17th, uh, live with Marcus <laughs> Belgrave. Yes, thanks, Mojo. You have... You love you, love you, love you. You have four tickets. Hang on one second, okay? Okay. 107, how you doing? Hello? Hello there. Oh, my God, my dog, is this it? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> okay, we on the phone, yeah. Uh, well, look here, you have four tickets to see Marcus Belgrave. I don't believe it. Uh, yeah, look here, you can be there Thursday, and uh, you're going to have a good time. I sure am. All right, hang on one second, okay? No, sure we... 107, how you doing? I'm okay. All right, what's going on? Nothing much. Uh, jazz concert Thursday evening, can you fit it in your schedule? Sure can. All right, you and four other people, or three other people. Okay, thanks. Hang, hang on, what's well, your name? Uh, hang on one second, okay? Uh, 107. Hello? Uh, 107. Uh, We're live on the radio with Marcus Belgrave. He's playing a set for us. So I'm going to hush and let Marcus blow.
Marcus Belgrave, live on the radio. Uh, t- uh, tell me, uh, Marcus, um, t- let's talk about the first time you picked up that horn and you uh, you blew you blew it for the very first time. Um, uh, like, were you, um, was it a school setting? And when you blew the first sound out of a, a trumpet? No, I guess the very first time. My father used to have a bugle. <clears throat> And uh, he taught me bugle calls uh, before I before I picked up the trumpet. So I, I I had a pretty good lip by the time I picked up the trumpet. And I guess the first public appearance I made was in the church, and uh, uh, and playing uh, uh, I don't remember this I don't remember the song, but it was a hymn. And you played it. Uh, it was the most beautiful thing that ever happened. Was you know you know how. How tall the cathedrals in the church are inside of the church. The sound was just so magnificent. Uh, you know, you know what, at, playing at home is a different kind of sound because the ceiling is lower. But when, they, when you play in an in a, in a open building like a church, the sound is so reflective. And it has a, you know, you, you feel like you're, you're, <laughs> you're in the outdoors. You know, it's a, the sound is so vibrant and real. It sounds like you know you, and, and they've always said the trumpet is the messenger, is the, is the instrument of the gods, is the messenger of the gods. They always he always called Gabriel to call his children together. So that's the what I felt the first time that I played in the church. Incredible. You know, this is a, you know sort of like it's a power. You know, I thought it was, felt like something was coming through me. You know, so that I guess I guess that uh, that. That and and the, and the feeling that 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 people gave back to me, as I was giving that feeling out to them, was in such an incredible you know relationship you know. Well, look the um, um, I mean the fact that you 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 picked that horn up. You're from Chester, Pennsylvania, and you've blown all over the world now. Um, uh, tell me about the different bands that you've been in. Well, see the first. In fact, I just got back from Wilmington, Delaware, playing tribute to a, a man who was uh, was the mentor and teacher for many great players. Probably the most famous is a gentleman who who was my third. Uh, I guess he was my third um, uh, mentor. Uh, his name was Clifford Brown. Uh, as I said before, I had first heard Dizzy when I was four, and then Miles when I was six, and then uh, Clifford when, uh, when I was about 12. We sat together in a band together. And just coincidentally, I, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, in fact, went to, uh, to pay tribute to Clifford's teacher, who is a... Uh, Robert Lowry in Wilmington, Delaware, which is just 15 miles from my hometown of Chester. And uh, so that was, Robert Lowry was was the first band that I uh, went out on the road with, uh, taking uh, Clifford Brown's place. Uh, But I, Prior to that, I'd had little groups of my own. You know how you are, you know, when you're in high school, you got little, you get little things together. But uh, I didn't consider that a uh, professional until uh, I went with the Boise. You know, so uh, so uh, Boise that was the first that was the first situation, uh, and then uh, after uh, getting out of the um, service, well, just prior to going in the service, I had heard Ray Charles's band. Because, like I said, we had a little band around home, and uh, we would play little gigs, uh, you know, little dance gigs and little bar gigs. And uh, and the most popular group right down that time was, was Ray Charles' uh, little seven-piece group because basically because they sang, and then he played a little jazz, too. Ray Charles played a little saxophone. And so his, uh, uh, his band was, like, the popular thing of that period. And when I went in the service, I um, 
I got an ch- opportunity to hear uh, hear that band. Well, in fact, uh, I heard several bands that used to come through there. Paul Williams and and uh, Paul Huckabuck Williams. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> yeah, I heard that name. Yeah. I heard that name. Yeah, he had a big band. Ruth, Br- Ruth Brown sang with that band. And uh, so uh, this was in 1957. And uh, and Ray Ray came through there, and I and I got a chance to sit in with him, and that was uh, you know one of the most exciting uh, th- things that happened to me uh, at that time. And then th- about three months later, I had gotten out of the service, and uh, Ray came to my hometown, and he spent two weeks there at a, cl- a Harlem club, and on his very last night there. One of the trumpet players, he had been telling me that he was going to quit. And uh, and so he did. And it was very fortunate for me because I, I think probably if, if they had left town, he, I probably would have never gotten a gig. But uh, by him quitting in my hometown, I, he asked me, could I, uh, could I uh, be ready in a couple hours? I said, yeah. A couple hours? <laughs> a couple hours. <laughs> so I was, uh, yeah, I went on. Played my first gig with Ray Charles in Buffalo, New York, after driving for in a blizzard that that very first night. Wow, <laughs> man, that's incredible. <laughs> really incredible. Incredible. But, uh, yeah, but that was one of the most exciting periods of my life. The first six callers right now. We'll take you uh, live on the radio. One oh seven. How you doing? Hey, how are you, Mojo? What's going on? I'm uh, doing good, man. Enjoying, uh, you know, listening to you and uh, Marcus Belberg. He's a, he's a good brother. Man, man, you know, you, wherever you go in this city, man, if you say Marcus Belgrave, right. no, no, I mean... This is music so great, but uh, he's just a good person. That's it. Yeah. Hang on. 107, how you doing? How you doing? Good. What's going on? Well, I tell you what, you're going to listen to Marcus that's coming Thursday night at Chain Park, all right? Thank you, Mojo. All right, hang on one second, okay? All right. This is 107 WGPR Detroit. We'll be back right after these words. No one wants to think about an auto accident. It's the most repulsive thing that could happen to you. Yet, every day on a freeway in Metro Detroit, it happens. If the unspeakable should happen to you, what you always need is a rich man's coverage at a poor man's rate. You can find just that. Low, low rates on auto insurance at the Bay of Trip Insurance Agency. Located at 16133 East 10 Mile. That's between Gratiot and Hayes. Here's Mr. Evelyn Tripp, the president and CEO of the Vape Trip Insurance Agency. Yes, we have low, low rates on automobile insurance. And if the unspeakable should happen to you, you will be covered. Evelyn Tripp from the Vape Trip Insurance Agency. Dial 772-7474. 772-7474. A rich man's coverage at a poor man's rate. Yes, this is Vev Trip. In a matter of hours, we can have you covered. 107 WGPR Detroit. This is Electrify Mojo. We have uh, uh, Jason on the line right now. Hello, Jason. How you doing, man? Hey, Mojo. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Say uh, something to Marcus. Yeah, I want I want Marcus to play his horn for me. I really dig it, man. It's cool. Is it cool, man? Yeah, he's right on the money. Like, you know, he's right here live in the studio. Hey, Marcus, I'm with you, man. You're cool. And if you'd like for Marcus to blow a tune for you, you could give us a call at 298-6477-298-6478-798081. Blow it for me, Marcus. Come on. Well, look here. He's getting ready to blow a tune for you right about yeah. now. Hey, Mojo? Yeah. I want to thank you for my girlfriend for giving her concert tickets to see George Clinton. Okay. A weeks ago, man. Well, all right. Appreciate it. Well, look at well, well, this week uh, you can return a favor to her. You can give us some tickets to go see Marcus Belgrave. Oh, that'd be great, Mojo. All right, hang on one second, yeah, okay? Thanks. Marcus All right, Belgrave. we're ready. Thank <laughs> you. 
What's up, man? Yeah, I liked it. Made my night. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at Jay. I'll tell you what. We're going to hook it up where you be at Shane Park. All right. Uh, this coming uh, Thursday to see Marcus Belgrave. Yeah. And you have four tickets. You can invite three friends, all right? Oh, I got them picked out, brother. You have them picked out already? Hell yeah, oh, yeah. They're with me right now. All right. Hang on one second, okay? All right, Mojo. 107, how you doing? Yeah, Timmy Johnson. What's up, Timmy? Hey, Jimmy Johnson. I'm sorry about that, man. Your Marcus knows me. Johnson. He yeah. knows you, huh? Hey, Marcus. Hey, brother. Hey, man. I, I didn't know you went with Ray and and uh and uh uh, uh what is it? Uh, 58. Huh? 58. That's what I thought. I I went with the Midnighters on 57. I know that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I was calling so I could get some of them tickets. I want to catch Fat Ed too. <laughs> yeah. What you up to? He's a piano player. He's a great piano player. Oh yeah. Johnson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've run into each other on the road many times. Yeah. Uh, what's up, man? Uh, who thinks who? Yeah. Oh, you listen to somebody listening to Mojo, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at man. Well, well, like, uh, is this the first night you tune in or just, uh... Yeah. You were just turn, messing with the radio and you heard something that sounded familiar and you said it sounds like, uh... Sounds like something I've heard out there on the road or something I, like I, that. I knew who it was when I heard it. You did? Yeah. Well, look here, I'll tell you what, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, now uh, he's going to play for Jimmy. Okay. Music for Jimmy from hear, Marcus Jimmy? Belgrade. What do you want to hear? You, you can request a song. Uh, do Stella. B flat. B flat? That's a, whatever you want to do it. <laughs> play, play the piano. <laughs> oh, look here, you sitting close to your piano? Huh? You sitting close to your piano? Yeah. Uh, why don't you hear the tune and see if we can hear it on the radio? Okay, wait a minute. See if we can get some uh, telephone and uh, <laughs> telephone synergy going here. Uh, the uh, pianist uh, Jimmy Johnson. Tell me a little bit about Jimmy Johnson, uh, Marcus. Jimmy Johnson is probably one of the workingest piano players in this town, and that's because he's got such charisma. You know, he's uh, like you say he worked with the Drifters back in uh, in '57. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, oh man, I run into this guy. We run into him everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to do Stella, too? See if you can hear this. I believe we can. <laughs> Marcus Belgrave. <laughs> Jimmy is on the uh, telephone right here. Marcus is live in the studio. Boy, they have some here. synergy going here. Jimmy Johnson, Marcus <laughs> Belgrave. What's happening, man? Hey. Look here, you said, could we hear that? Huh? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you came through like a, like a Howard Simmons. <laughs> yeah. Man, man, that was incredible, man. Yeah, okay. 
That was incredible. Across the street. Where you at? Huh? You at home, right? Yeah. How far are you off Jefferson? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm right at uh, Jefferson, and then you got Leonard. Yeah. Well, well, between Leonard and Lafayette on, on uh, St. Albans. Right. Well, well, look here, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, look here, man. Um, uh, uh, hit another tune. You guys want to do one more? Yeah. I, I couldn't. I, I just went on and played. I couldn't hear y'all because I went in the other room and oh, I put my okay. cordless phone down by the by the you know by the amp. Okay. So well, I well, just played. I couldn't. I couldn't really hear y'all. You got the phone. You got the phone by the amp. Yeah. And you in the other room. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have this on tape and we're gonna play it back for you. You're gonna be surprised. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he didn't miss a beat. Yeah. Let me hear. We can't hear it now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to do one more? Uh, well, I, 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 like I said, I really couldn't hear y'all. I, I, I just went on and played the tune. I, you I know. Heard you. I heard well, well, he's going to follow you. I stay right with you. He's going to well, follow I know, you. I know he can do it, but I want to hear. Shit, I couldn't <laughs> hear, hear what was going on. Well, That's we got, strange. We, we're giving, we, gonna, you, we, I'll, let you, we, I'll let you hear the tape. Huh? Oh, I'll let yeah. you hear the tape. Yeah. Let me see. Wait a minute. Are you coming to the concert Thursday? That's what I called for. I wanted to get some of them tickets. Okay, you got it. You'll be there. Yeah, you, you'll take my address. Uh, you have six tickets. Uh, yeah, yeah take, take my address. Well, well look, here. I, I don't want to take it live on the radio because uh, uh, you might get mobbed over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, what? Uh, we're going to put you on hold for a moment and then we'll get it. But we got we got to get one more tune going here before we put you on hold. Okay, let's see. What are we going to do? Let's what? do a, a, a strolling. Okay, let me see. Wait, let me go back in the room now. Okay. okay. I'm going to follow you. He's going to follow you. He's going to do strolling. Jimmy Johnson on piano, Marcus Belgrave on pocket trumpet. He's on his way in there. When we hear that first note, um, we'll let it go. It's a little live jazz on the radio and on the telephone. Jimmy Johnson is on the telephone. Yeah. Do I, do I thought about you, man. I thought about you. Took a trip on the train? Huh? Talking about took a trip on the train? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, one, one flat. Okay. Okay? All right. One flat? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Took a trip on the train, one flat. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson on the telephone. <laughs>
okay. Jimmy Johnson, Marcus Belgrade, live on the radio. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, well, look here, man. You guys are absolutely incredible. You know what, man? I, I, I can tell you for sure that nothing like this has ever happened before. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, this is the first time anything like this has ever happened, period. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, a brother calls on the telephone, plays his piano on the telephone, Marcus Belgrave here in the studio, playing along with someone on the telephone that he could barely hear through my headphones, and, this, and they never missed a beat. You guys were absolutely stupendous. Yeah, thank you. But you know what? What's that? You, Mar Marcus is so, the cat is so inspiring, man. You know, when I, when I play with him or when I see him walk in, that, that puts a swag in me, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about me you when think I, I might, see you? I might be drunk all night if he walk in the building, man. That, that you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said he said he said he felt the same way when he saw you, Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm glad you guys can have a, a reunion, and plus the fact make some uh, musical history. Yeah. This is the first time anything like this has ever happened. Well, that's cool. Now you talking about somebody can tell you some stories. Jimmy Johnson. Uh, hey, Jimmy, tell me what you know, man. Download. It's, it's, hey, man, we ain't got time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I. You know, so many things, but, you know, Marcus know about that road, man. It's, but tell me about it. Tell me a little bit about the road. You and Marcus, man, right here together. Y'all share some war stories with me. <laughs> let me see. What, what can I think of? <laughs> was, was you, uh, you, you, you was with the Drifters when, what's, the, what's that big girl's name? Etta. Etta James. Etta James. Etta James. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, would, I, I took over the band from the Midnighters and went with her in... We, 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 we quit in New York, man. We quit in 61, yeah. and I went with her. You know, I took the band and went with her. I, I was a soulful girl. Yeah, oh, yeah. She was just lazy, you know. <laughs> 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 but, I, but I sort of found her, you know, I'd make her go on and, you know, come on out with it, you I know. I remember when you was with her. <laughs> uh, down in Carolina, all those... Boy, Carolina, we burned up some road up in Carolina. Oh, we? man. Oh. Well, you, you know that's where I'm, I'm originally from. Really? Yeah. What part? I'm from Goldsboro, man. Goldsboro? Yeah, it's the same It's the same county that Train is from. It's uh, like Wake or Wayne County, you know. Oh, John Coltrane. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but he's from, and they, but Sherrod, when he's from, no, he's from Hamlet. Hamlet. That's Hamlet. Biz, biz is from Sherrod, yeah. South Carolina. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And Monk is from Rocky Mountain, I think. North Carolina. No kidding. Yeah. All them Carolina cats. Yeah, you do. Some stuff, yeah. <laughs> Man, all those guys from Carolina? Yeah. yeah, but like I've been here since I was three years old, though. Oh, I see. Yeah. But you spent a lot of time down there during them them years. Yeah. With mm -hmm. the, would you have Hank? Would you with Hank? Um, Hank Ballard too? Uh, yeah, I was with the, I was with them five years. I thought so. You know, that's when the we we had the band when Ray Charles got drugged with us. The we was in. Uh, <laughs> We was in Oakland, and and it was us and 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 Ray Charles and and Seal Austin, and Ray and Seal was arguing about who was gonna start the show. That neither one of them want to go home, and we, and we said we'll we'll go home, and we burned the stage up. Ray Ray come out there. Who is these MFs? <laughs> Good to hear your voice. It's same here, man. <laughs> you know, can't, can't nobody catch up with well, you. Well, that's because you work all the time. I got, I got some uh, pictures for you too. Oh, okay. That thing we did with Doctor Kavorkian, I got, I got a beautiful picture of you and him, man. You said okay. Doctor Kavorkian. Yeah, yeah. we, we did, did a play the party for Doctor Kavorkian. Uh, Doctor Kavorkian? Yeah. yeah. At, yeah. at his invitation? Huh? Yes. At his invitation. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, this is a, a Christmas party that uh, Jeffrey Feiger, the lawyer. Oh, Lord. They, they have it out in Farmington every year. I play it every year. Yeah, I, I play and, it with them this year. And, and, uh, and uh, you remember this other thing we did, Marcus? And, uh, I mean, how did it feel when you got the invitation in the mail? I, this is uh, Dr. Kevorkian <laughs> wants you. <laughs> I, just, I knew what it was. Okay, I'm not going to say anything else, man, because I'm not going to blow the gig for next year. <laughs> but wait, Marcus, Marcus uh -huh. you remember that thing last year we did at Kadima? At Bur Birmingham, yeah. Yeah, you know, I told you I'm doing that again. 
Oh, you are? Yeah, just me. Are you me. using me on this time? Huh? Are you using me? Did you take my advice? You, you, told, you told me you was going to be out of town. <laughs> we, we heard that one. <laughs> well, look here. Huh? Hey, well, when Marcus... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, we're not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the, what month is that? That's September the 21st. Oh, that's right. I am going to yeah. be out Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be with Wynton Marcellus with the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra. And guess what? Yeah. You, you, you know I knew his daddy when they were little kids, man. When they was you what? know, they had this motel in, in, in uh, New Orleans right on our special of town. Right, right. And they had the club. Everybody used to come and play. That's right. Yeah. Well, he used to come and snatch us up all the time. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't let us wouldn't let us rest in the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Come and pick you up. Come but, on out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Sure, it's good to hear your voice. The same here. Man. So, so, Jimmy, how long have you been playing the piano, man? I could tell that you've been playing some years. I've been I've been playing as long as I've been been, been big enough to get up on the stool. But here's what happened. <laughs> my <laughs> my cousin was a jazz piano player. I don't. Uh, you might know him, Marcus. He's in New York now. He's he's much older uh, much older. John Gillespie. John what? John Gillespie. Same as this, but his name is John Gillespie. And he looks like a East or West Indian. No, I never knew him. Yeah, but he been he been there for he left he left in forty six and went to New York. But he never had time to show me nothing. But every time he got off the piano I climbed up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I, I basically taught myself how to read and then when I got in service I I learned I ran into some cats like Hampton Halls and stuff and they oh, you know they tightened me up you know yeah they laid it on you yeah because you sure got it <laughs> I, I love to play this cat one on one man <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah <laughs> only problem for a long time he didn't have no instrument yeah <laughs> <laughs> well look here man do you, you guys know any Duke <clears throat> huh you guys know any Duke yeah 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 what you want uh, uh let's see A train yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let me go back in here again. Uh, <laughs> let's hear your footsteps this time. <laughs> He's going to the piano. <laughs> He's getting ready to sit down. We're sitting here with two giants. Marcus is getting ready to pick up his horn. And now they're getting ready to throw down live on the radio. Jimmy Johnson and Marcus Belgrave. Jimmy Johnson on the telephone, on piano. Marcus Belgrave live at the studio on pocket trumpet. And they're getting ready to blow the A train from Me Duke Ellington.
Jimmy Johnson, Marcus Belgrave, Jimmy Johnson on the piano, on the telephone. Uh -huh. And, and uh, like they can't even, they can't hear each other. I mean, like Marcus could hear Jimmy, but uh, Jimmy couldn't hear Marcus. And uh, that was uh, an awesome uh, synergy right there. So, uh, Jimmy, so man, they say music is the international language. What do you say? Yeah, I think so too. I know it is. <laughs> it's, it's music is life, man. You know that's you know that's 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 how you get it across. I mean, you I, I do. I put myself into it when I when I play a tune. I I know that's how I get across to people because a lot of people have a lot more technique than me. But uh, I, I, I know I got soul, and I know how to hook things up, you know. <laughs> no, I know, I know what I got, you know. That's right. That's I, you know, that's the way I approach it, you know. That's why I say he's one of the working his piano players. And he works so much, you forget about him, <laughs> you know. Man. And he, you know, he's, he's always out there in Birmingham and, or, 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 or what is it? You know what, man? Right. You, you, ought to, you ought to come by one Sunday. Come by, I play at the River Place. On, Ma on MacDougall in the river at, from 12 to 3 every Sunday. You ought to come by and just, you know, just do a couple of things with Mac me. MacDougall? Huh? At the, at the river place? Yeah, Louis uh, is on the river. Oh, right down here? Yeah. Right down the street here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are they open again? I thought they were closed. Wait, I've, been, I've been there about nine months. The river place? The yeah. hotel there? Huh? The hotel next to the yeah. river Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. In fact, I, I worked there Thursday. See, I do a lot of... A, a private special things that I played for the the Her Heritage Hotels. That's what that's what that is. I did that uh, last Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So that's every that's every what a every every Sunday the Sunday brunch from uh, twelve to three. You didn't call me, Jimmy. I, you know I like Sunday brunches. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's hip too. Huh? Yeah, the food is good and. Hey man, they treat you like like royalty. Everybody, you know. Who's who's out there with you? Huh? Who's out no, that's with just you? me. Just by yourself? Yeah. Uh, I, I put hey, we'll, we'll both be down there Sunday. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay, now where is this? Louis on the river? Yeah. Uh, between 12 and 3? Uh, yeah. No, it's from 12 to 3, yeah. 12 to uh -huh. 3. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be down for dinner. Okay. Brunch. I, I know who's the chef. Uh, Louis, the okay. boss. Is, is that not part of the rattlesnake the great, the great anymore? Big, he's, a big, he's a big heavy cat. He's not part of the rattlesnake anymore, is it? Uh no, uh uh, uh, -uh. But that's it's in the same location. It's, no, it's across. It's down. It's it's a, it's right on the river. It's, you know, the rattlesnake is on this side, and and, and uh, uh, Louis is is down, right down in the corner on MacDougall, right up, right on the river. You, I could look, I could look over my shoulder at the water. Okay, you right there. You right there in the hotel. There. Yeah. Right there. Okay, yeah, because I I played out there two years ago. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I had that gig two years ago, and Rattle, the Rattlesnake was the, was the chef. Then. Yeah. But they gave it up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks this, this cat, me. this cat that I'm with, he's, uh, he's cool, too. They, they opened in a club in Southfield on Northwestern, I think, and, and, uh, Those rest uh Evergreen, I, I might be able to use you, because he said he's going to let me have a group, and it's going to run four or five nights, you know. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, look, you know, man, you have to bring your piano down uh, to the radio one night, uh, down to the station, and man, we get uh, Marcus down here. Yeah, well. And and what do you think about that? Yeah, that sounds yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. You want to do that? Yeah, it sounds all right to me. When you want to do it? Well, I have to check my traps and check, you know. <laughs> check your calendar. <laughs> in, in, in fact, <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. In, in fact, man, you 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 take my number because I got a lady supposed to call me and supposed to be on the way. You know. <laughs> so what? <man? laughs> yeah, I, got to, I don't want to block her. You know. Well, look looking, man. We're not gonna block any action, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at, hang on. <laughs> get my get my number, man. <laughs> Jimmy, I didn't want to put up. I didn't want to put your business in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, hang on one second, man, and we, we might catch you Sunday, man. Okay. Oh, look here. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back. We'll, we'll, I'll come to you right after this break, okay? Okay. All right. This is 107.5 WGBR. The Mental Machine, a brand new book from the electrifying mojo, a bestseller available at bookstores all over town. People always ask, what would Martin Luther King really think about what's happening in America today? What would he think about what's happening in our cities? 
What would Malcolm X think? What would Marcus Garvey think? What would Frederick Douglass think? I think they would be very sad. So on the cover of the book, you see them looking down at the convulsions in our city, at the violence, at the pestilence. How does the mental machine address violence? It addresses violence, number one, by stating what violence is. It's a disconnected heart and a disconnected mind. It's that part of man which has ceased to be man and has become more animalistic. We need to get back to a time of peacefulness, a time of harmony. Uh, God put us here to uh, make this world a better place, and I think the uh, mental machine will help you get back there. It's a book that deals not only with the problems, but it moves to definitive solutions. I didn't set out to write a book. A book set out to write me, and I write every day. The Mental Machine. More than 539 pages of the truth. I've handled bookstores all over town. No one wants to think about an auto accident. It's the most repulsive thing that could happen to you. Yet, every day on a freeway in Metro Detroit, it happens. If the unspeakable should happen to you, what you always need is a rich man's coverage at a poor man's rate. You can find just that. Low, low rates on auto insurance at the Vail Trip Insurance Agency. Located at 16133 East 10 Mile. That's between Gratiot and Hayes. Here's Miss Evelyn Tripp, the president and CEO of the Vail Trip Insurance Agency. Yes, we have low, low rates on automobile insurance. And if the unspeakable should happen to you, you will be covered. Evelyn Tripp. From the Vail Trip Insurance Agency. Dial 772-7474. 772-7474. A rich man's coverage at a poor man's rate. Yes, this is Vev Trip. In a matter of hours, we can have you covered. Thank you, Detroit. Together we're doing it. There's no other way to get to where you're going. Mr. Fofo's is very famous for their desserts. The pastry is so dominating. And to whether you're in the fish department, the rib department, or the deli department, the pastry, the smell of nice, juicy, fresh cobblers and cakes and donuts and cookies and brownies and pineapple upside down cake and not to mention fried pies and, and chocolate chip cookies and oatmeal cookies. And I can go on, not to mention the home-cooked chocolate that we cook back there just to put on our five-layer cakes. Mr. Fofo's desserts, his pies, his sweet potato pies are like none other. They're so tempting and so delicious until the Colonel himself asked me to make a pie for him. And I asked him, Mr. Colonel, I would be delighted to make a pie for you. I am the one and only Otis Nap Lee. Thank you, Detroit. Together, we're doing it. Jerry has asked me to sing tonight, and, uh, <laughs> and I was wondering where she got that idea. <laughs> I know your voice. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Let me see. <clears throat> 